Advent Messenger, April 8, 2022. The Christian world gets ready for the pantheistic celebration of Earth Day, Sunday, 2022. An article by Andy Roman. A new Earth theology has paved the way for a new religion, complete with new gods and new acts of worship. In a coordinated effort, faith, climate change, and green earth spirituality have all been linked together. All of the churches are following in the footsteps of Pope Francis, who has established a new pantheistic ecological mysticism as well as a new morality. It's a global campaign to make us forget our true identity and mission of bringing the true gospel to every person. Sin, forgiveness, obedience, and saving souls have all been replaced by a new sense of environmental responsibility. The new evangelism based on Catholic social doctrine is causing churches to bury Christ's teachings that God desires that we share with the world. Quote, Each year at Creation Justice creates an Earth Day Sunday toolkit with liturgical resources, sermon starters, biblical insights, and action ideas. This year's theme is Weathering the Storm, Faithful Climate Resiliency. This is from the Episcopal Creation Care. The article continues. Earth Day Sunday is an annual religious celebration marked by liturgical celebrations, worship, and prayers observed by various religious communities. Earth Day Sunday is a worship service dedicated to the environment. On Sunday mornings, various churches hold Earth Day services to teach Sunday morning sustainability. Occasionally, indigenous people... The original Mother Earth worshipers attend these Earth Day Sunday services with Christians. Make no mistake, the churches are urging people to honor the Earth. As a result, the invitation is to get ready because Earth Day Sunday will be celebrated this April 2022. Where do these churches get their information about Earth Day Sunday? What is the origin of the green pseudo-religion that is displacing biblical truths? Everything stems from Pope Francis's encyclical Laudato Si on climate change. The Pope's vision for our planet is founded on this demonic blending of the sacred with the heretical doctrine of pantheism. Quote, The ultimate destiny of the universe is the fullness of God. All creatures are moving forward with us and through us towards a common point of arrival, which is God. Laudato Si, number 83. Another quote, the spirit, infinite bond of love, is intimately present at every, at the very heart of the universe, inspiring and bringing new pathways. Laudato C. number 238. And this from Laudato C. 235. The sacraments are a privileged way in which nature is taken up by God to become a means of mediating supernatural life. Through our worship of God, we are invited to embrace the world on a different plane, Water, oil, fire, and colors are taken up in all their symbolic power and incorporated in our act of praise. From Laudato Si number 9, As Christians, we are also called to accept the world as a sacrament of communion, as a way of sharing with God and our neighbors on a global scale. It is our humble conviction that the divine and human meet in the slightest detail in the seamless garment of God's creation, in the last speck of dust of our planet. While Pope Francis adju- uh, advocates for the veneration of the earth on one hand, he also advocates for the preservation of Sunday as a day of rest on the other. A quote from Laudato C. 237 says, On Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist has special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationship with God, with ourselves, and with the world. Sunday is the day of the resurrection, the first day of the new creation, whose first fruits are the Lord's risen humanity, the pledge of the final transfiguration of all created reality. It also proclaims man's eternal rest in God. The article continues, The principles contained in Earth Day Sunday are taken directly from Laudato Si. Sunday worship has been intertwined with Eastern pantheistic philosophies. 
The heart of Laudato Si is Sunday sacredness and spiritualism or earth worship, which are the very principles embraced by the churches in the modern environmental movement. Where is all this headed? What is the ultimate objective? Everything that is going on here has a purpose, and there is no need for us to make any wild assumptions. Pope Francis proposes a solution to the environmental crisis that he believes is urgently needed. The Pope also suggests that in order to solve our problems, an international authority with global jurisdiction over all nations should be established. To manage the global economy, to revive e economies hit by crisis, to avoid any deterioration of the present crisis and the greater imbalances that would result, to bring about integral and timely disarmament, food security and peace, to guarantee the protection of the environment and to regulate migration, for all this there is urgent need of a true world political authority. Pope Francis from Laudato Si 175. Continuing. Pope Francis says that his encyclical on climate change that we need a single global government, government to manage the economy, food security, the environment, and peace. This refers to the process of buying and selling. Do we have any idea where this is going? In Revelation 13, 17, prophecy describes this exact scenario during the Mark of the Beast crisis when no one can buy or sell without the Mark, or Sunday Law. A universal government authority will be established to impose the mark of the beast on the entire world in order to enforce the worship of the beast. Revelation 13.15 They're working on that right now. Rome is also spreading her wine to the kings of the earth, see Revelation 17.13, with the call to act promptly for the sake of saving the world from any more suffering due to climate change. The great apostasy of Revelation 17 and 18 is almost complete. Babylon's children are coming home. The kings of the earth, her daughters, the false prophets, spiritualism, and even the merchants of the earth are joining in the great spiral or spiritual decline. Where are all the faithful preachers of righteousness who will announce the fall of Babylon at such a momentous time as this? Where are those who feel the, urgence, uh, the urgent responsibility to point out this prevailing iniquity? Today before our eyes, Babylon is actually making all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. See Revelation 18.4. Just as intoxicating wine blurs our distinction between right and wrong, so the doctrines of Rome will confuse the world between truth and error, between holy and the profane. That is why, prior to Babylon's fall, its final decline and destruction, God's only remedy is to obey the end-time call to come out. Revelation 18, 4 and 5 says, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. As we watch the world descend into greater errors and falsehoods, may God have mercy on us and keep us faithful. For more content and discussion, visit Advent Messenger. A link to this article has been provided in the description, and thanks for listening.